Good uh, morning to everybody. This is Eddie G's Music World. We are doing something, two things we never did before. We're, we are doing uh, cam, camming where you could see me, and we have a special musical guest. His name is John Magnuson. Say, say good morning, John. Good morning, everyone, even though it's uh, a bit, bit later here in Sweden. Yes, true. John is in Sweden, so it's about four o'clock in the afternoon, but I'm in uh, Montreal, uh, Quebec, Canada, and it's 10 o'clock a.m. So we kind of uh, have a different time zone, but we're all professionals and uh, we worked it out. So uh, I was impressed with your music and I, I've, I've heard a, a lot of it, uh, uh, which is available on different uh, uh, formats, which you'll explain. So I thought I would talk to you and see a little bit about what your like is in, in your music life. Uh, introduce yourself to the audience and uh, say a little uh, hello, and then I'll come and ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, as you told, my name is Jule Magnusson, and I'm, I reside in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, and uh, I have been playing music since, since I was a little kid and been writing music since I was a teenager. Uh, and now I'm 32, but I haven't actually uh, been that professional uh, for more than two years. Or well, I'm not a professional yet, but I, I really have put, a, put in an effort to be able to to make a living as a musician. So that's my long-term goal, to, to be a musician full-time. Uh, but at the moment, I'm uh, home with my with my little daughter. It's my first day of parental leave. That is really generous here in Sweden. So I'm going to be at home until the uh, beginning of September. Um, yeah, that's a short introduction. Um, I was going to ask you. One of the questions was, what is your day? What profession do you have uh, other than music to keep you going financially while you're doing your music, or is it just music that you're doing? No, I'm actually a social worker, so up until now I've been working as a group leader in the social services in Sweden. Uh, so I've been working with addiction and relationship violence, uh, and before I also worked with financial support. Uh, so I've been working as a social worker for uh, a bit more than seven years. Well, that's a good profession. People need help, people have issues with addiction, uh, and... Uh... It's amazing that you help people in that sense as well. And who knows, you know, I read a lot about musicians doing other things before they became uh, famous. And uh, I won't bore the audience with 20 stories about all these rock stars that were struggling before. Not struggling, but, you know, I had to do other jobs. So yeah. I, I noticed that you played live outside of, your, uh, of Sweden as well as Sweden. Tell me about your... Um, visit to Spain and if you have any other stories about other uh, countries that you are planning to go to tour, uh, let me know that as well, answer that too. Yeah, actually Spain is the tour I got planned in, in May this year, so I'm going for one week and doing some small shows in, in Madrid and in Bilbao. So I have a few friends over there that are helping me to set up a few gigs and uh, Last time I went on tour was in the UK in 2017. I went there for a week, also quite small gigs at, at pubs and stuff like that with people I got to know through the music scene on internet. Uh, so I haven't done anything really big yet. Uh, it, it has more been for, for fun. Have you? It's kind of like my radio career. It's always been fun and it's a little, I've gotten a little bit off the ground a bit, so helps me and it's it's interesting to talk to people too so in your shows did you open up for a band that you that uh, that in some of the shows in uk or was it strictly you and your uh, your group uh it was a few open mics and then there was uh, me and some friends that had uh, put together a night together and also i played at a private wedding uh, thanks to a friend who knew uh, the guy that uh, was getting married and finally, I played on a small festival in, in Crawley, that's south of London. So it was uh, quite a different kinds of shows. Okay, that's interesting to hear. So you're getting into it, you're getting bands playing around you. Is your band like a full, uh, I know it's you, you you're very skilled in guitar and other mus instruments. Do you go 
when you do the shows, do you have other instruments, uh, other artists like uh, musicians playing with you? Actually not. Uh, when I'm playing live, I'm playing uh, only with acoustic guitar and singing. Uh, since uh, it's it's a bit expensive to hire in musicians, and I don't make that much money from from the gigs. So even the more rocker songs with the instrumentation, I have uh, rearranged to to suit uh, the setting with only acoustic guitar. It's a good idea because I know, like uh, you've heard of Men at Work, right? Uh, he, uh, Colin Hay is the lead singer and he lost one of his uh, group members that passed away and he makes a living he goes by himself he does all the from what I know he, he brings his acoustic and maybe as a piano he just does a show on his own without other people it's true you save money this way and uh, yeah. you get to uh, play uh, you're talented enough to play them so I looked at your uh, your history of like your favorite influences of uh, music bands is just, I'll give you a quick story. My mother met one of your uh, influences that you liked, uh, Leonard Cohen. You know, you, you uh, must know his music, right? Yeah, yeah, he's his um, top three. He is from Montreal, where I'm living, and uh, he used to go to parties when he was an unknown in the mid 60s. And my parents, my mother met him, and he played music for people for free, just like in a in a house, you know. And she signed a paper, and we kept it. We have it somewhere here. Uh, it's like an autograph of Leonard Cohen, and uh, he had a pretty interesting life. Of course, I don't go into a whole story about him, but uh, that's an interesting little story, a background about. Uh, about the uh, experience with a good influence for you. Uh, that's re really exciting. I I'm envious. Yeah, well, I didn't meet him. I wish I did. I looked yeah. at your uh, your lyrics. It seems to be very introspective, like you're, you're dealing with uh, a reflection of your life. Is, is it more you or other people that you've observed that inf inspire you? Or is it just like... Just things that pop in your head when you um, when you think of writing lyrics. I think it's quite a, um, actually a combination of all three, uh, all three, because sometimes it's more self uh, biographical, sometimes it's just made up. Like I made up a person in my head and I write a story around that person. Like always, oh, a rebel is uh, typical uh, such a song that is. Not based on a true story, but it's like a personality uh, that I'm imagining. And then I write the lyrics from that. Great. So you're drawing on your personal experience and ideas that you think of that uh, that uh, you can find a way to attach the melody to the, the music to the words. This is always an interesting thing. Like, do you, do you start coming up with music and then you think of what do I do? To put words or you have words and like some artists they they take the existing words they write and then they flesh it out with the music they put in after or is it both um actually before it was more that i came up with the melody and uh, the lyrics at the same time like it was w one and the same id and then i uh, put chords to the melody uh, now lately I've been learning more like uh, music theory, so I, I can also write only melodies that I then can put lyrics on. So I actually expanded my, my knowledge a bit, so, so uh, I have uh, different ways of working now. Have you ever heard your music on any radio? And if so, you would be very, I'm assuming if you do or you did, you'd be, it would be the highlight of your day. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, I actually um, been working a lot of building a network with contacts. Uh, like you maybe noticed, I'm very active on Twitter, uh, connecting with new people. Uh, so I actually made quite a lot of, of contacts and friends in the in the radio world. So um, yeah, I had some some radio performances as well. And uh, the biggest one was actually when they played me at public radio in Spain in December. That must have been great. I know that yeah. uh, in radio, I've heard myself on the air a few times, but uh, never, never a huge like uh, like my own show. But I've been on a few times, guest hosting, music talk shows, and stuff. So um, that sounds like your daughter. She wants. She must be your biggest fan. Yeah, she she is, she, she has no no option. <laughs> okay. Uh, what another question? Um, 
what kind of bands pass through your uh, town, like Stockholm or Sweden? Let, have there been like big, uh, name a few uh, musical acts that have passed through in the last five years, just to give the people a feel for your, uh, how you, uh, what the concert scene is like in where you live. Uh, actually, I'm uh, the, like the last five years, I haven't been that active, but before I've been seeing like Paul Simon and Leonard Cohen, I went to see uh, once in Stockholm for like eight years ago. So I think most of the big bands, when they are touring the world, they are going to, to Sweden and um, also quite a lot of indie rock bands and smaller independent bands are going to, to Stockholm. So it's quite a lively scene. Uh, have you ever uh, encountered, met any celebrity types, people like that, music people, like talk to them, uh, had a little back and forth uh, discussion or autographs with these type of uh, famous people? Yeah, one, one Swedish uh, really famous artist, Håkan Hellström, but uh, uh, no international. Uh, yeah, once I actually was uh, uh, was working at a festival, so I met uh, Desmond Decker, who was, who was a really famous ska singer. So I actually talked a bit with him, but he was quite <laughs> up in the blue. Well, it's good to, to meet people. You get a feel for their uh, experiences in the music business. Uh, in the middle of talking, I have just thought I'd ask you, throw a couple of, uh, of your ways that fans can reach you or you can reach them, ways that they can buy your music. Uh, find your music, find you shows. If you have it in front of you, I should have talked to you a little bit in advance to prepare you for the, just to ask you that, I forgot. But if you want, sell them a couple of ways that they can find you on the internet or any other way. Yeah, the best way is through my website, uh, johnmagnuson.se. Yeah, so it's J-O-N-M-A-G-N-U-S-S-O-N dot S-E. Uh, and also on Facebook, I'm very active. I actually have a messenger channel uh, through Facebook. That's really cool. Like it's half automated. And uh, the rest of it is me being able to, to interact one on one with, with people. So that is really cool. Uh, and also on Twitter, uh, you can uh, find me and on all the regular uh, streaming sites like Spotify and iTunes and so forth. That's J O N with a with an without an H like John Bon Jovi. He says he spells it. Yeah, the same. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I was going to ask. Um, that is a very. I have to say, you have a very good organizing uh, way to reach people, which is good because you have to nowadays. There's no A uh, and R guy running around at a fifty thousand a year salary with, uh, you know, uh, pushing your music around all the like the oh, the eighties and nineties was more that. Uh, you know, the label throws you. 30 grand to help you and then you have to sell all the records to sustain yourself uh, to keep that money in your pocket uh, so a typical day is working for you you have your child is there when you write your music is there is, is there any kind of messages inside there that you're trying to portray but in a more uh, mysterious way or is it mostly i know you 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 discussed your your methods but do you ever like have a theme that is not easy to figure out in the way you write your music uh, no, that, that's really hard to say. I, I would say each song is quite um, stands for itself. So it's not. Uh, I don't want my music to be too political because even though I have a certain political opinion, I I want people of other beliefs and political opinion to be able to enjoy my music as well. Uh, so I so I'm not trying to to write too political, even though some of of the lyrics can be interpreted in a political way uh, but I want people to be able to to relate to them without them being too uh, too obvious right well, that's a good way to do it I mean a lot of people they paint themselves in a corner with anti uh, you know they go against a certain political party and uh, you know then they get tagged as being uh, against one or for another I know that in America there's a lot of uh, anti-Trump discussions yeah. going on and uh, you know people uh, they go and their fans start to turn against them or they go for them you know it depends on that it's a good it's a good attitude so if you were to say mostly the most uh, favorite part of your music uh, doing your music and the least favorite 
thing that you're that that's part of your music what would you say the two things are uh, the most fun is uh, writing and, and the recording like i love the creative part uh, even though i like playing live uh, my my favorite part of this it's it's uh, producing uh, new songs uh, and the least favorite is like the more um, like the more routine stuff when it comes to marketing uh, Actually, now I've been working a lot to build a good system to to find new people to interact with. So, so the boring part gets sorted out uh, by itself. So I can actually just uh, take the fun part, like when we started interacting on on, uh, on Twitter. Yeah, that was fun. I like to meet. Uh, I'm a fan of uh, music, and I love new acts coming up, and I relate very well to people trying to get exposure. And I, I, uh, I'm in the similar boat because I'm not on, uh, you know, uh, uh, serious satellite radio with Howard Stern doing shows on a famous uh, um, network or anything. But I'm working towards something better. But I still enjoy what I do too. Have you ever been like stressed out from your like, let's say? For me to do this with hundreds of people watching, I would be a bit stressed. Like as I'd look at these people that are expecting like uh, special things to happen. But do you get that way when you're doing your show? Uh, do you ever get a little bit uh, have anxiety due to the show, the live performance? Yeah, uh, like especially now, uh, sometimes you don't get very much sleep with a child. So I, I'm doing weekly Facebook live shows that are really fun. But like last week, I was so tired. I felt like, oh, I, I rather would, would get an hour more of, of sleep. But I felt like I, I, I had to do it because I promised. Uh, but otherwise, after one or two songs, uh, you get in the flow. So uh, then it's mostly fun. Well, I'm glad that you, you've got it worked out to be... To be uh something you can deal with and uh, do shows and get it done very, very well. And I, and I like your music. I want to give you one more question and we'll, we'll have a very wrap up type of thing. Um, you have any advice for anyone else in their twenties, 18, that's maybe looking towards this kind of career. They have writing and singing and they feel like they have something to offer the world. Do you have any advice just for them? Yeah. Like, connecting with people and being being a nice person is going to take you a long way like you have to have a music that is good but there are so much good music out there now that that does that isn't enough uh, so like to have a, a genuine interest in getting to know new people is a really big help uh, i think it's it can be a bit uh, sad that there are very talented musicians that aren't that social, that doesn't have the same chance as they maybe had before uh, when when they could have a management doing all the social stuff for them. Uh, so so it's pros and cons, but being social and generally trying to to connect with people. Well, I heard this song like this is uh, street where I was born, lust for life. I like growing old disgracefully. Uh, I didn't ask you this in advance, but if you happen to have it around, uh, you could play a couple of songs, a little bit of each one if you, but don't spend like, you know, I don't want you to go looking, digging it up. If it's handy next to you, uh, play a bit of some of one or two songs if you would like. It's up to you. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm I'm on my phone, so I don't have okay. the possibility. But if you want, uh, I can send you the files if you want to to put them in the in the recording. Uh, well, what I can do is I'm going to uh, tweet out a few of your songs uh, here and there this week to give you a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit more people to hear it. I don't. Uh, if there is a way to do it, I have a guy that is kind of a helper in the, in this kind of show. If he, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, contact him later and try to uh, get him to put some of that music on. I think he can do it. I wanted yeah. to thank you very much for your uh, your input with this interview. You help a very interesting person. I do wish you the best of luck. Um, and what I would say again is throw a 
John Magnuson, throw us again a couple of ways to find you on the internet or uh, ways to hear your songs again. And uh, then from there, we'll say uh, thank you for the last time. Yeah, uh, my homepage is the best place uh, where you can find links to all my music on different sites and also links to all my social media. So that's johnmagnuson.se, J O N M A G N U S S O N dot S E. And also, uh, my messenger channel is the place where I I interact the most with people one on one, and also uh, put out like exclusive songs and behind the scenes stuff. So that that is a really cool channel. Okay, well, thank you very much, John. Get back to your daughter. Good luck in your music career. You know how to find me. I know how to find you. If ever you yeah. want to update me on things, uh, be feel free to do so. And uh, like I said, I appreciate your time very much. And uh, um, good luck for you, my friend, and keep in touch. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, John. Take Talk care. soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.